Hello again. Uh, my name is Masood Olia, and I'm here again with uh, another exciting video, hopefully. And uh, funny thing, uh, this is called base excitation. Uh, exciting excitation, I guess. They go together. So what I want to show you today is a problem, a typical problem of base excitation, where you typically in your system, say suspension system of a car, you have a mass, uh, you have a spring, you have a damper, and then the excitation coming from the base. So the base is here, this is the base, and the excitation, y as a function of time, let's say it's a harmonic excitation. So y here is the amplitude of the base, and this omega b, I'm going to call this the base excite, uh, base frequency rather. So basically, this is your input frequency. Imagine a car is going on a bumpy road, but the bumpy road is the profile is a sine wave, let's say. So uh, what's important in design is what would be the amplitude of the mass, the chassis of the car, for example. How much uh, movement we have of the mass. And of course, we can look at the total solution, uh, but what is important really in design is what we call a steady, steady state solution, which is also really the particular solution of the differential equation. I'm not going to bother with showing you the differential equation of this system. It's going to involve x double dot, you know, uh, the input y, x dot, and so on. Uh, and actually y dot uh, and x dot. So, uh, but instead I'm gonna actually concentrate on the solution, uh, bypassing a lot of, of the derivation. So here we're gonna say the steady state solution is equal to x cosine omega bt minus phi. So we assume a solution like that. What is important to us is this amplitude. That's called the steady state amplitude. And I'm going to show you an example, you know, to you see what that means. So it turns out that if you're looking for this steady state amplitude, and this is the phase angle, but the phase angle is not that important, even though it can be determined. So it turns out that x is equal to y times this expression, this bracket, which in the numerator we have 1 plus 2 zeta r, the whole thing is squared, divided by 1 minus r squared, and I'll tell you what r is in a minute, plus 2 zeta r again in parentheses is squared, but the whole thing is under a radical or raised to power 1 half. Now, r is called the frequency ratio. And that is the ratio of the input frequency to the natural frequency of the system. Now, of course, natural frequency is just simply square root of k over m. And input frequency is the frequency of the base. Uh, and uh, here, zeta is equal to b, the damping coefficient, divided by 2 square root of km. And uh, zeta, of course, is called damping ratio. Just if you don't remember the name for that, that's a damping ratio. And uh, basically, if you take this uh, equation and put it in this format, so in other words, take the y and put it un under the uh, x, and this equation basically becomes pretty much the same thing, you know, the right-hand side is the same, 1 plus 2 zeta r squared divided by 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 zeta r squared. And remember, this is whole thing is raised to power one half. This ratio of x over y is referred to as the displacement transmissibility. Also known as other names for it is the uh, uh, amplification factor.
In other words, if uh, a bumpy road, we have a bumpy road which is in the shape of a sine wave, and let's say the amplitude of that is 10 inch, so the tire of the car is hit by 10 inch, a good suspension system, obviously you don't want your X to be too large. So if your X is 20 inch, that's not good. You have amplification, 20 over 10 is an amplification of two. A good suspension system is one that it arrests the, uh, the amplitude of the output. So for example, you wanna have something less than 10 inches. So we'll see that in the example in a minute. Now something interesting about this uh, equation, it turns out that it could show, shown mathematically that if this frequency ratio is less than root two, then the ratio of x over y actually is gonna be greater than one. So you have an amplification. And if the frequency ratio is larger than root two, then this amplification factor is gonna be less than one. So obviously for a suspension system, you want the ratio of x over y to be less than one. So actually you could adjust your system based on the, uh, this frequency ratio. So let me show you an example of this now with numbers. Imagine you have a system, pretty much what we have here with the mass spring and damper, right? And let's say the mass is given, so these are all given, given the mass to be say uh, 300 kilograms. The, uh, the stiffness uh, is equal to 40,000 uh, 40, rather uh, newtons per meters. And the damping ratio is unknown. So this is the one that we are trying to find. So let's say we are told that it is observed that the mass vibrates, the mass is vibrating with an amplitude of 10 millimeters. This is the steady state amplitude that we were talking about. So given that X is uh, 10 millimeters, right? When this guy is uh, vibrating at the highest of 10 millimeter, the steady state amplitude, the Y, the amplitude of the base, is given to be only two and a half millimeters. So you see clearly you have an amplification of 10 over 2.5. See that's X over Y, that's four. Not a good suspension system. Um, anyways, this is happening actually at a very dangerous frequency actually. This is happening, let's say, this is happening at R equal one which is the resonance. Now resonance is very dangerous for systems when do they don't have any damping. In fact, for mechanical system, that's a disaster uh, because the amplitude will, will get really large. So um, what we are trying to find, as I said, is uh, the, uh, the damping coefficient. So this is happening as re at, at resonance. That's why we have such a high amplification. So let's go to our equation actually. And uh, you see this equation right here, x over y. So let's plug in, x is 10 millimeter. And by the way, you don't have to change it to meters because remember, this is just a ratio. 10 over 2.5 is equal to one plus two zeta. Remember, r is equal to one now. So when you put r equal to one, it just, this becomes two zeta uh, squared. Uh, let me actually put this as underneath. And look what happens here. When r is equal to one, this is zero, and then we just get two zeta again squared. And remember, this is raised to power one half. So this becomes four, but if we square it, we can get rid of the radical. So at the same time, I'm gonna clean this up for you. So this becomes four zeta squared, and this becomes four zeta squared. And then look, this is a really, a simple problem is 16 times four zeta squared, that's a 64 zeta squared, right? Equal one plus four zeta squared, then take the four zeta squared to this side, so we get 60 zeta squared equal to one, and then zeta becomes the square root of one over 60. So if you calculate this, this zeta happens to be relatively a small number, 0.129, so very low damping. And of course, if you have more damping, you're not gonna see that much amplification. So now you guys know that zeta back here in this equation is equal to b divided by two square root of km. So we can go ahead and solve for b. b becomes two zeta square root of km. 
So therefore, 2 times 0.129, right? Square root of k is 40,000. And m is 300 as given in the problem. And if we solve for b, b comes out to be, and that's the damping coefficient, about 894.43 with the unit of Newton seconds per meter. So that's the answer for the damping coefficient. So I hope you like this video. Um, and hopefully, I'll come up with more examples later on for you. As always, thank you for watching and listening.